Welcome back to my video series where I show you how to take a pile of parts on the bench and transform them into a fully assembled, fully configured quadcopter ready for you to go out and fly it. Wow, you do that intro like 17 times and you start to get better at it. If you just randomly dropped in off a search result, I want you to know that there's a playlist in the video description that will take you through the whole process of building this quadcopter and I hope you're interested in following along with it. But for everybody else who's following along, here's what we're gonna do in this video. We are going to calibrate the sensors on this quad in order to let it fly. How long could that take? I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. Calibration is so important in iNav that there's even a calibration tab specifically for this process. And there's two sensors that we're going to deal with calibrating, the accelerometer and the compass or the magnetometer. There's a third kind of sensor that you could calibrate called an optical flow sensor. We don't have one of those and it's not really relevant to this build. The job of the accelerometer is basically to tell the quadcopter when it's right side up to tell it which direction gravity is. And in order to do that, it has to be calibrated because you know the, who knows which direction the, it's facing. Now calibrating the accelerometer is really freaking easy. Calibrating the compass is a little trickier because the compass, like why do you even have to calibrate the compass? Don't you know which direction north is? Isn't that kind of the whole point? Is that north is north? You should calibrate it. Well, the problem is that the compass operates based on magnetic fields and especially depending and right here with computers and lights and metal and the, there's all kinds of things that affect magnetic fields. Calibrating the accelerometer, you're pretty much going to do one time and then it's probably going to be fine if you like crash the quadcopter hard and like shock the accelerometer, you could throw off the calibration. But in general, the, once you calibrate the accelerometer, it's just going to stay calibrated pretty much forever. But the compass, you might have to calibrate the compass. It might be a good idea to calibrate it every time you go to fly. In fact, for all I know, iNav forces you to do that. All I, the only experience I have so far, because this is my first iNav build with compasses, is my DJI Mavic Mini. And that thing's constantly saying, compass calibration required. So we're going to calibrate the accelerometer right here on the desk with the computer, which I think is the easiest way to do that. But I'm going to show you a way to calibrate the compass without ever using a computer, because you're not going to have a computer with you every time you go to fly. And before we do that, some of you guys are going to notice that I have installed my GPS unit on the quadcopter. Real quick, let's run over to the bench and we'll do that and then we'll come right on back. Mounting the compass on this iNav quad is going to be a little bit different than on the Betaflight quad. Uh, on the Betaflight quad, I mounted it out at the end of the arm and that is not a good idea because the compass or magnetometer on this is sensitive to electrical fields. So putting it close to a motor which has a lot of alternating current electricity, a lot of magnetic field, putting it next to these wires is gonna throw it off. The best case scenario is to put it on a mast like two inches away from the quad. Well, we're not gonna freaking do that. Um, but we're gonna try to get it as far away from the electrical fields and get the best compass reading we can. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tuck this extra wire up in behind the camera just to kind of get it out of the way. You don't wanna have the wire somewhere where a uh, motor could, could chop it and I'm gonna, this 3M tape actually came with it. And I'm just going to, okay. So see this arrow here? That has to face forward or the compass won't work. The compass is directional. And we wanna install it with the GPS antenna facing up, obviously. So we're gonna put this 3M tape here. And we're just going to stick it to the quad. And I'm being a little fast and dirty here because there's no room for a GoPro on top. And you would probably be like, well, don't you want a GoPro? They make 3D printed GoPro holders and on top of the GoPro holder is a cutout for the uh, compass. Um, there are various creative ways you can do it, but just quick and dirty here in order to get this quad in the air, I'm just going to do that. That's gonna get ripped off though. Like I guarantee you that's gonna get ripped off. So, 
you might want to like get some electrical tape or you might want to just I don't know that's what we're going with for now oh that's bad advice though you guys I'm sorry guys I can't do it I'm supposed to be giving you good advice and that's bad advice so let's see if we can just like maybe with zip ties just help make it a little because the tape is good but the, it will get ripped off of the tape but if you like combine it with some tape or a zip tie that will be sufficient I think to like back up the tape and have it be okay is this bad for the antenna to have this plastic on here I don't think so I think we're okay I don't know, man. There's just, on little quads like this, there's just no great place to put the, the compass, the GPS and magnetometer. Um, if you put it toward the back, it's near these antennas, and that's bad. If you put it near the motors, really, this is kind of a small quad to be doing INEV on. But anyway, let's let's get on with it. Now, if you're used to calibrating the accelerometer on clean flight, beta flight, or uh, base flight, basically all you do is set the quadcopter flat, you hit calibrate, and then it knows which direction up is. The calibration for iNav is a little bit more complicated than that. You hit the calibrate accelerometer button, and then it gives you this little dialog, and then nothing happens. But notice that all of these are now grayed out. So then you're going to hit calibrate accelerometer again, and you're going to put the quadcopter in one of these six positions. So we just calibrated flat straight up and down. Now we're going to flip the quadcopter upside down and unfortunately the all this stuff is going to get in the way but I'm just going to move it to the edge of the table and set it as flat and level as I can. You can't see it on camera but trust me. And then we're going to do these four directions facing to the left, facing upward, I'm going to try and get that as close to like 90 degrees as I can. It's a little, I'm not sure that you can tell, but I'm, I'm leaning it on the motors. Um, but it doesn't have to be like perfectly up and down. Uh, I asked Pavel Spakowski. He is an INAV developer. He, has a, he also has a YouTube channel and he makes videos about INAV. And he actually gave me a lot of help as I was prepping for this. Uh, really appreciate his time and his, his willingness to help out. He said if it's within like, I don't know, I don't remember the number he gave, but like five degrees. If it's within a few degrees of vertical, you're probably fine. You don't need to freak out about it. And we're done. So that's the accelerometer. How do you calibrate the compass, especially in the field where you might not have a computer with you? The answer is stick commands. There are special stick commands, special combinations of movements of the sticks that tell the flight controller to do something. And a lot of people don't even know these exist. They've been in this firmware since way back when, and they're still around. And if you look at this document uh, on the INAV wiki, here are all the stick commands, but the one we're most concerned with is calibrate mag slash compass. And in order to initiate that process, we're going to put the throttle up. We're going to push yaw to the right or left stick up and to the right, assuming you're in mode two. And then we're going to pitch down. And that will initiate a 30 second window during which you need to move the quadcopter in a very specific way. What you need to do is you need to rotate the quadcopter 360 degrees on the pitch axis. 360 degrees on the roll axis, oh, there we go, and 360 degrees on the yaw axis. And I actually, <laughs> I learned to do this from the DJI guys. They call it the DJI dance, and it works exactly the same. You could do it however you like, but here's how I do it. So you stand up, you hold the quadcopter facing to the left, and you turn in a circle. And that's 360 degrees on the pitch axis. You hold it flat, and you turn in a circle, and that's 360 degrees on the yaw axis, and then you hold it facing up, and you turn in a circle, and that's 360 degrees on the roll axis. Now after you do that, you still got the whole 30 second window left, and so you just kind of tweedle it around in your hands until the 30 second window expires, and then your compass is calibrated. Now it turns out that there is no indicator in the OSD. Like I wish the OSD, at least I didn't see one. I wish the OSD and the goggles would say calibrating compass. Seems kind of obvious. When you initiate compass calibration, 
there will, you'll hear two beeps from the beeper, but this quadcopter doesn't have a beeper on it. So it was a little confusing at first for me to figure out whether I had even started it. But check this out. What I want you to see here is not this blinking red LED, that is the video transmitter, but on the flight controller, back in a ways, there's an LED going blink, blink, blink. And that is the flight controller's status LED. And what I want you to see is I'm going to input that stick command and watch what happens. Up and to the right and down. And notice that light began flashing rapidly. And it's going to keep flashing rapidly for 30 seconds. Can you even freaking see that? You can. You can see it in there. You're going blink, 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 blink. That's going to keep happening for 30 seconds. That's your compass calibration. Now, I want to, I want to warn you. This is a terrible place to do a compass calibration because we're got all the computers and everything. I'm going to have to do this again before I go to fly. And hopefully the OSD will warn me if the compass needs calibration, the OSD will show you. Now it's done. The OSD will show you compass calibration required, but I got to tell you, like, how's it going to know? How's it going to know that was a crappy one? Well, actually, maybe it knows because it could tell it wasn't being moved around. Hmm, maybe they're smart enough to, I don't, I don't know. But um, compass calibration is really important. Without the compass, the flight controller doesn't know which way it's facing, and it can't do things, it can't do a lot of the autonomy. It can do acro flight mode without a compass, but it can't do a lot of the other flight modes. So, one eternity later. Hey there guys, it's Joshua from the future. Actually, there's one more step in setting up your compass that you need to do. And I'm gonna show you what happened on my maiden flight when I tried to activate position hold, uh, which requires a compass and GPS to be working correctly. Then I'm gonna show you how to fix it. And let's try position hold. We got 12 GPS sets, here we go. Let's get a little altitude. Okay, it's flipping out. Okay, I don't know what that was. When I hit position hold, it kind of flipped out. That's life. That's why we got uh, some clear space and we're ready to flip back into, um, into acro mode. Let's try position hold again. Let's see, it tried to, let's get a little, a little space. This should be position hold, ready? What is it doing? No. Bad. If position hold is not working. So after a little bit of reading in the wiki, I figured out that just because you mount your compass with that arrow facing forward, as I showed you earlier in the video, gosh, you, what's the whole point of that arrow if not to tell you which direction your compass should face? Well, apparently that arrow is not reliable and may betray you. So I want to show you how to verify that your compass is facing the right direction. And I guess you should do this with every build because I guess you can't trust that stupid arrow on the sticker. Here's how to do it. So here's what let's do. Let's go into OSD and let's put heading on there. Okay, we'll put the heading on there and we'll save that. Yeah, which way is north? North is basically, if I'm standing in here, yeah, okay. So if I'm standing here, then north is almost directly to that other corner. That's pretty good. That'll give us some idea of where, if we're in roughly the right place. All right, so this should be pointing due north, zero degrees, but it is pointing 270 degrees. So the compass is off by 90 degrees. That means the alignment is incorrect. What we need to do is we need to rotate the compass alignment by 90 degrees to the to the right. Configuration, clockwise 90. Let's go clockwise 270. Cross fingers on that one. 360, perfect. So now we're facing north, but let's check that it rotates the right direction as well because if it's flipped upside down, then north will be north, but then left and right will be reversed. So as I go to the right, east is 90 degrees, so we should go 90, what? The F, oh, there you go, 270, aha! See, so this is north, and it's roughly reading 360 as it should, but as I go to the east, which should be 90, it takes a second, but it's going to settle on 270. 
So it is also flipped upside down. Okay, so we're almost right. We gotta, we gotta instead of making it 270 degrees, we gotta make it 270 degrees flip. Clockwise 270 flip. I think this is gonna be right. Save and reboot. Now we still should be facing north, but now left and right should be correct. All right, great, north. Now east should be 90 degrees. Perfect, south 180 and 270-ish. Good, now it's working. Yes. And now we've calibrated our accelerometer and we've calibrated our compass. We are nearly ready to go fly, nearly. That's going to do it for this video, though. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you're as excited as I am about getting this guy out and doing some autonomous flying. I promise there's like one, maybe two more videos, and then we're going to be ready to go. That's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.